This is an updated video for Android 9 in VirtualBox. Here are the minimum requirements. Now you want to make sure that you match at least these minimum requirements. If you have more RAM or more disk space, that's definitely going to run better. You can also increase the CPU so it allows to run smoothly. Running Android in VirtualBox is a great method to test apps. I wouldn't recommend it for gaming. If you want to run games in Android, I definitely recommend checking out one of these emulators instead. They'll run a lot better. And if you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let's install Android 9 in VirtualBox. So we're going to begin by opening up our browser and heading over to android-x86.org, which is the official website. We're going to click on the download link right over here. And then we have the option to download it from the main site or one of the mirrors. We'll just go ahead and download it from the main site, which is Foss Hub. And we'll scroll down a little bit further. The latest version that we have is release candidate two for version Android nine. You can see that right there. It is a 921 meg file, and this is the Android 64 bit version. So if your system does not allow virtualization uh, from the BIOS, you're going to have to use the 32-bit version, but in this case, we're going to be using the 64-bit version. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and let it download. The download might take a few minutes. I'll jump over to the next step. Okay, so we can see that the download is now complete and I'll jump over to my downloads folder. You want to make sure you know where this ISO image file is because you're going to have to point to it later when we do the setup. So I'm just going to minimize these windows and we're going to go ahead and open up our VirtualBox manager. And inside VirtualBox, we're going to go ahead and click on the new button up here at the top and we're going to give it a name. The name I'm going to be typing in is Android 9. And the machine folder, I'm going to be leaving it as default. You can change this if you're running into space issues. Then for type, we're going to go in here, select Linux, and the version will scroll all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to be selecting other Linux 64 bit and then click on next. For memory, uh, you're going to want to have at least four gigs of RAM available for this. If you can afford to have more, go ahead and do that. It'll just run more smoothly. Once you have that selected, click on next. For hard disk space, we'll be leaving it as default for create a virtual disk now and then click on create. And we'll be leaving the default option for VDI as is and then clicking on next. Dynamically allocated will be fine. Click on next. And over here for file location and size, my default path is fine. Again, if you're running into space issues, you can relocate this folder to somewhere else or a different drive. For the disk size, you're going to want to have at least 10 gigs available. More will be better if you want to install more applications. So go ahead and click on create when you're done. And you can see that we have the virtual machine over here, but we're not done yet. What we want to do is just modify the settings. So you want to make sure it's selected and highlighted in blue and then click on the settings button up here at the top. And over here under system, you're going to have the option under processors. So for CPUs, you want to increase it to at least two CPUs. If you have more, it'll run more smoothly. Uh, just keep it within the green space. And then under acceleration, the para virtualization interface, you want to select KVM over here. And then next under display, we're going to increase the video memory all the way to the maximum allowed, which is 128 megs, which is great. And then over here under graphics controller, we're going to be selecting VBox SVGA. Then we're going to go over to storage and then we're going to select this empty disk. And then over here on the right hand side, we're going to be selecting the choose a disk file. And this is where you're going to have to point to your downloads folder where the ISO image file is downloaded. So you can go ahead and select that and then click on open and then click on OK. And we've just completed the virtual machine setup. We can go ahead and install the operating system. So we're going to make sure it's again selected over here on the left hand side and then click on the start button. We're going to go down to advanced options, hit enter. Then we're going to be selecting the auto installation method and then hitting enter on our keyboard and it's going to begin the installation. Okay, then we get a prompt here that's asking us to confirm that we're going to be doing the auto installation. Then we get a prompt that just to confirm our selection for the auto installation option, we're going to say yes and then hit the enter key on your keyboard. And it's gonna go ahead and format your virtual drive. So we just get prompted that the installation is successfully complete. We can go ahead and run Android x86 right now by hitting the enter key on our keyboard and it's gonna boot up. So we're at the installation wizard and we have the option to select United States. You can choose whatever country you want over here. I'm gonna be leaving mine as default and then go ahead and click on the start button. My computer is physically connected to the internet. Uh, there is no Wi-Fi, So I'm gonna go ahead and skip this. And now we get to set the time and date. So we have the default time and date, and we can just go ahead and click on next. Location services and everything else. This is really a personal decision. I'd like to disable them, but you can select whatever you want. Click on accept after, and then you can set up a pin or password. I'm not gonna be using that right now. I'm just gonna be leaving it as default. And I'll say not now, and then we'll skip this. And then you're given the option for the quick step or taskbar home app. You can select whichever one you want. I am using the default and then click on always. You can always change the way it comes to the dashboard. And there you go. You have Android 9 running on virtual machine on a Windows 11 PC. Now, this is excellent if you want to install apps. 
um, but I don't recommend it for gaming. If you want to use gaming, you can check out these videos and I'll walk you through the steps of using an emulator. This is great for testing applications or just running Google apps or Android apps on your desktop. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please smash that like button. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.